Let's explore the new Azure API Management GenAI features to support the LLM models. You would typically use an Azure API Management to make it easier for you to manage your backend API. So you put Azure API Management between your application and your backend API. Azure API Management in this case will add lots of features that are useful for your application, like for example, using the load balancing. So here, if you have multiple backend API, you can load balance between those different uh, uh, resources. Another aspect that will, will be managed by the Azure API management is the authentication. So the Azure API management, because now it's the service that will call the backend on behalf of the, of the application, actually it can use the managed identity to handle that authentication. So it should have the right airbag roles in order to access the backend and API. And now to secure how the application accesses the Azure API management, we can also apply authentication at the application level. So from here, we can use the Azure API management subscription key. Through this key, the application will be authenticated in order to use the right API that give it access to the target backend API through the identity. Now, some of the requests that will be issued for the backend might be repeated requests. So why not just take advantage of the cache? Why not caching those responses, these requests and these responses? And now instead of invoking the backend, we can just ask the cache for a response for the user request. So that's one of the native features available in Azure API management, which is managing the cache. In addition to these capabilities, there are others like tracing in order to get metrics and logs for troubleshooting. You can also define a mock API. So before implementing your real API, you can just expose a mock API that returns a static JSON file, for example. And then from API management as many of Azure services, you can get the logs and also the metrics available in Azure Monitor. So all of these features actually could be configured and enabled through the use of uh, policies. So here for each one, actually there is a policy that would be defined, a policy actually that's an XML definition that will be applied in the API management for each API. So those are the standard features available in Azure API management. Those works well with when I have a backend API that is REST API, for example, but it also works well when I have an LLM model like OpenAI, Mistral, or any other model. So here we can, st we can still apply the load balancing for these models. Even if I have multiple instances of the LLM, I can actually send the requests to all of them. So here can also load balance to this instance. And here it turns out that it's really very useful to take advantage of the priority retry and the circuit breaker patterns in the load balancer. Because now with the LLM models, most of them actually have some constraints. First constraint is the token, the number of tokens available for each model. And a second constraint that is the number of tokens available for each region. So there are limitations for the number of tokens that you can consume within a Azure subscription or within a specific uh, region. So the solutions for this would be either to use the pay as you go model, use the PTU with the reserved capacity, use the global resources, the data zones, or you can just create other LLM models in some other regions. So for example, here, your main region would be, for example, West Europe, and then you can create a second region in East US, for example, and then another one in Sweden Central. And then using the priority and weight, you define the priority for each uh, instance. Then using the retry pattern, you detect if you have hit the limit for a specific instance. So then you retry on the next instance, which is in another region. Now to avoid hitting that limitations within each model in each region, we have the new Gen AI capabilities available in Azure API management that is always available through a policy that is called LLM token limit that will allow API management to limit the number of tokens that are issued by an application or by a user to the specific LLM model. So this can define a limit of 2000 tokens per user, for example. Another useful feature is the LLM metrics. With this new policy, you can get some specific metrics if specific for the LLM models, like the number of tokens that are consumed, the number of remaining tokens, tokens available per application or by, or by uh, instance. And all of this data would be retrieved through the use of Azure Monitor, so typically log analytics. 
And then from that log analytics, you would have typically an application insights that is attached. And there you can get actually nice dashboards for this data. Another very useful feature in the Gen AI features in Azure API management is the cache. But here the cache differs from using the cache in a typical backend REST API because here we just save the request, which is the HTTP request asking for product ID, for example, and then the REST person is going to be just the JSON for that uh, product ID. Now with LLM models, the request that will be sent by the user, that's going to be a prompt. The structure of the prompt is different than the structure of an HTTP request. It's still a JSON file, but that will contain actually the user request and also the system message. Now we work when we work with cache with LLM models, we typically refer to it as semantic caching. The semantic cache now will rely on a database that supports the vector search in Azure API management that is Redis cache. So Azure API management can go to connect to your Redis cache instance. So now inside Redis, you will save the user prompt as the request and for the response, you will save the response that you get back from the LLM model. But we know here for the user request, it could be actually expressed by different manners and by many ways by the users. So here when we do a lookup for the right response, we should not just compare text to text for the request. We need to perform semantic caching or semantic searching. That's the name semantic cache. And that involves using another component that is the embedding model. So we'll transform the user prompt to a vector and then Using that vector, we'll search for the nearest vectors stock stored in the Azure Redis cache. And then we find the right response and then we respond back to the application. Another feature of the Gen AI gateway is the streaming. And this is very important. Typically, when you invoke directly the LLM model, the LLM model will respond by using the streaming. So it will send you actually chunks of the response. So the user can start reading the first element of the response. And then the LLM back, the LLM model will continue sending back the uh, complete response later. The same concept we could also be used in Azure API management.